I am Lawrence Brunetti, a toxicologist at the University of Pittsburgh Drug Discovery Institute. It is my pleasure to guide you through the concept, setup, and use of the human liver organotypic cell culture model. There is a solid rationale for having a human adult liver in the VPROMPT project. The liver performs around 500 critical functions, which makes it vulnerable to many diseases or drug toxicity. The liver is the major drug metabolizing organ, which means there is a possibility of reactive metabolites causing adverse outcomes either in the liver or being released into systemic circulation with potential to harm other organs and tissues. The rationale be behind having a human liver is to avoid known or unknown mammalian species dependent compound metabolism. Let's start with a review of the component parts of the human liver OCM platform. Starting with panel A, four liver cell types are layered into a commercial microfluidic device in a sequential order to build up a tissue which mimics the liver sinusoidal unit. By the end of the process, the cells will undergo additional cell organization before forming the final three-dimensional multi-cell type liver tissue. The cell types include the parenchymal primary hepatocytes, liver endothelial support cells, and immune reactive Cooper-like cell in the fibrosis producing stellate cells. These cells were chosen for their interactions which drive liver functions and are key cell types in the expression of liver toxicity or disease. Note in panel A and B, a portion of the primary hepatocytes have been genetically encoded with a fluorescent protein that is responsive to a mechanism of toxicity such as oxidative stress or induction of apoptosis. These subpopulations of hepatocytes are called sentinel cells. Sentinel cells allow non-invasive methods to study the time-dependent activation of toxicity over weeks of treatment. Note in panel C the collection of media effluxing from the liver OCM. The efflux media allows measurements of various secreted biomarkers related to the health and function of the liver. Finally, panel D shows how the data is collected, managed, and analyzed through the use of a microphysiology database. The database is not just a repository to store data, but is actually web linked to various public databases to draw on external information on any test compound with an overall goal to build predictive computational tools which can be used to assess human risks. The human liver model used for the VPROMPT project. The top left is a schematic view of the commercial device with a slice drawn in to indicate how the four cell types organize and assemble inside. Underneath the schematic of the device is the exploded slice view showing the cartoon version of the cellular organization. The cells form distinct layers which are organized as a near mimic of the liver sinusoidal space. We know this is the actual organization based on the image to the right of the exploded view which is showing in three colors cell layering as determined by confocal microscopy measurements. In this model we have demonstrated and published 28-day functionality, 28-day toxicity studies, drug metabolism capability, immune-mediated toxicity, and the early activation of fibrosis. Shown here is the loading method for extracellular matrix proteins, cells, or other biological components of the device. The critical step at this point is to avoid introducing air bubbles. The tubing being attached is connected to a syringe pump to introduce media flow. A second tube is attached at the other end and inserted into a collection vial for our secretome measurements. Over the course of an experiment, the collection vial is changed daily. Once assembled and ready to initiate microfluidic flow and drug treatment, the unit is placed into a 37 degree, 5% humidified incubator. Treatment is then initiated. This is our standard study protocol for testing chemical agents in the liver OCM. The liver receives 18 days continuous exposure to the toxic during which time 29 separate cell or sequence measurements are made. Media and images are collected on the various days as indicated in the study design table. Also as a part of our VPROMPT collaboration, we collect and provide liver condition media for the other downstream OCMs, and we can provide media for omics type analysis of the secretome. 
Liver OCM and study protocol was used to test 15 compounds under 18 days of treatment. We chose pharmaceutical compounds to validate the system because of known effects on the liver from preclinical test animals and clinical use. Compounds were chosen based on hepatotoxicity severity and for having a favorable C-log p-value to reduce the amount of drug loss to the various biomaterials used in the construction of OCM devices. Here the researcher is demonstrating live cell image collection with an OCM device. The high content imager is equipped with an environmental chamber to eliminate as many temperature changes as possible and the device does remain under media flow. Before proceeding, it is worthwhile to provide details on how the genetically encoded fluorescent protein biosensors are used to demonstrate toxicity. In the left panel, the liver is built inside the device as noted in this bright field photomicroscopy image. The two movie loops show the effect of vehicle control and the phasidone treatment on the hepatocytes containing the apoptosis biosensor. The white square represents the area of the liver OCM captured by a single 20x field. The same liver shown in the center panel shows an even distribution of green fluorescent hepatocytes. A minimum effect over a 24-hour time period is noted in the control images in contrast to the decrease in fluorescent intensity in the drug-treated well. The biosensor signal is lost as apoptosis is initiated in the hepatocytes. After the images are collected, imaging processing software can be used to convert the pixel intensity into an integrated number which can be plotted as shown by the time response curves on the bottom right. In this video, the scientist is rendering the intensity information on the images into a quantified number which can then be used to determine the effect of drug treatment. In this case, two fluorescent probes are being processed. An essential component of the liver OCM is the microphysiology database to collect, manage, and allow analysis, including use of computational predictive tools. It is web-based accessible. Shown here is how the database is organized functionally into study design, study implementation, and study analysis. There is also a general global search function to locate information on a compound, study, device, toxicology, or component of interest. Finally, the findings from the 15 compound testing are summarized here as a simple cumulative index of adverse incidents determined by the 29 live cell readouts. Known hepatotoxins such as troglitazone, tocopone, and trovofloxacin have higher cumulative adverse responses compared to compounds with very rare incidents of clinical hepatotoxicity such as thimonidine and metoprolol. Compounds in between them have various levels of clinical idiosyncratic hepatotoxicity. In general, the rank ordering shown here corresponds to the known effects of these compounds. In summary, the liver OCM is a validated, physiologically relevant, three-dimensional microfluidic microphysiology model designed to identify potential liver toxicants through live cell monitoring of temporal as well as concentration-dependent effects.